Hey guys welcome to the channel. As you see on the thumbnail what if Issei was never resurrected. Before I start please hit the subscribe button and like the video. Also share this video with your friends. Let's start the video. Issei Hyodo was dead. He knew he was. Yes, at some level at least he was aware of this. He had been murdered. By his own girlfriend. On a date. Their first date of all things. Right when it was coming to its end. Walking through the park at evening hand in hand with her, with an actual girl yes, and then suddenly, she turned around and killed him. Not only that, she had suddenly somehow, transformed. Black wings grew out of her back, she seemed to become a bit taller, her clothes changed. No, he thought, they vanished and were replaced with a strange but very sexy leather outfit. Well, a small consolation was at least that he was able to see her naked for a few moments in the second while she did transform, Issei said to himself. He remembered the words, the person who had killed him had said this to him. Will you die for me? It was kind of fun. Like playing house with a little child. The mocking words were still hauling through his head. Well, it could have been worse, a very small sarcastic part of him thought. At least she had fun. Who cared about why? How she had casually, and coldly, commented to him why she did it, in words he did not even come close to understand. Blame God for putting this sacred gear inside you, she had said. What the hell did that even mean? He thought. Sacred gear, what the hell was that? He had died. Or did he? He asked himself. XXX Issei was dead. When he was looking around right now though, he wasn't even so sure about that last part anymore. He was standing inside a completely empty white room. What was strange however was that he couldn't actually make out any real walls. The room just seemed to continue until he couldn't even make out its end anymore. What in the world was this crazy place? He had been dying. He was quite sure about that. But somehow he was still, alive. He asked himself. The last he remembered was bleeding out back there in the park, right next to the fountain. And now he was here. Wherever that was, he looked down on himself. The wound was no longer there, he realized. His body was healed. He was pretty well sure however that he had a bleeding wound in his chest just a few moments ago. Dot and well, he still had a body. This alone would be strange if he were some kind of ghost, right? Was this heaven? He asked himself for a short moment. But then he should be surprised to be even here, another sarcastic part of him thought. After all he had been a notorious pervert. He did die, didn't he? I see you have arrived, a voice greeted him. And no this is not heaven. But yes, technically, you died. As Issei turned around he saw the figure of a young man, maybe 25 or 30 years old by his looks, with dark brown hair who was about one head taller than him. He was wearing something that looked like a quite ordinary styled gray suit. At least that was what he looked like at the first glance. But something told is that this was anything but a normal person. He didn't really understood it himself, but somehow his senses were screaming at him that this guy was all but normal. It told him to either run away or bow down to him. And there was something else. How in the world did this guy know what he had just been thinking? Who are you? How did you know? He attempted to ask him the question, but once again the stranger was one step ahead of him. Who I am? He replied. I actually have many names. You can just call me. Darian. That is at least the name I am going by currently, he stated. What is important for you is, I am the one who has brought you here. And, to the question how did I know what you were thinking? Yes Issei Hyodo, I have indeed been reading your mind, the man said to him smiling friendly. What? He just thought. Okay, after girlfriends who suddenly grew wings, stab you to death and then fly away, maybe this should not be surprising him that much. Despite the insane things the man had just told him he wasn't in any way a threat at all. In fact his expression was actually, comforting. Maybe that was it, he had just lost his mind. Yes, things like Yuma growing wings and killing him, finding himself in a completely white room with a man who claims that he can read your thoughts. That couldn't be true, could it? In reality he was probably locked up somewhere and in a straight jacket, surrounded by doctors who were trying to find out what was wrong with him he thought. No, Issei Hyodo, you have not gone crazy, the man told him, once again repeating what he was thinking. 
All of this here is actually quite real. You're just no longer in your regular world. Ah ha ha ha. Issei suddenly started to laugh, sounding however quite forced. This is a dream, right? I am dreaming. Or is all this here some kind of special effect? Are you from one of these TV shows? I see. You are confused, he said casually. That is more than understandable in your situation. First of let me assure you that nothing will harm you while you are here. And to your questions, where we are. This here is, as it is called, a probosorical spatial dimension. You could say it is a small gap between realities that my group is using for its purposes. A what? Issei wanted to call out, but it became only a quiet whisper. He slowly nodded with his head sheepishly. Of course he understood absolutely nothing. Maybe I should use other means to convince you, the man said. Suddenly the room around them changed. Instead of being in a white empty space they were now, standing a few centimeters above the open sea. Or better said they were hovering right above the water. Issei could hear the waves of the ocean, could feel the wind. It was so real. Come on, touch it, the man named Darian said, as Issei bowed down and reached his hand out to the surface of the sea that had just appeared where they were standing. He could feel the cold water running through his fingers. It is, Issei wanted to say. It is real, technically at least, Darian told him. My power can form this place and whatever I will it becomes reality. I would be capable of even more if I were truly here, he stated. Truly here, but, Issei questioned. My physical self is actually in a different universe. The body you see here, like everything else around you, it a manifestation I have created with my mind, he explained. Everything around them now changed back as it was before. The ocean under their feet was once again replaced with the empty white room. Once again Issei was aghast. Other universes? He asked. Like in the TV shows, the being named backquote Darian, responded with a hint of humor. Of course. For a moment he grinned and actually had to hold back his laughter. Even the being in front of him had a grin on his face. But then remembered where he was. Does that mean you are something like, ah, God? He asked. Given the power he possessed this question was not so far off. No, the man replied, but you could say I and my group are deeply connected to the force you would call God. But that is an explanation for another time. I see that you can barely keep up with the few things I have already told you. That would be an understatement, Issei thought sarcastically. I have brought your soul here, to make you an offer, the being called Darian said to him. An offer? He repeated. Brought my soul here. As I have told you, you have indeed died, the man continued. As you have probably figured out, your current body, just like mine, is just a mental projection. I have formed it so that we can talk easier. Your true body is still lying in the park, he told him calmly. Issei didn't say anything. He had suspected something like that actually. But hearing it from his mouth, Issei only managed to gulp. I am a guardian, a protector of the multiverse as you could call it, Darian introduced himself. I am the leader of our group and I want to make you an offer. An offer? Yes, but tell me first, would you like to live again? He asked. Of course I would, he replied heatedly. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? That is a good question. What if I told you now that your return is to be bound on certain conditions? What do you mean with backquote conditions? Of course I want to return to life. All I want to do is go back and forget that any of this ever happened. If you can bring me back then just do it. That is exactly what I meant, the man stated. I fear that the option to backquote go back how things were, no longer exist for you. What do you mean? Issei asked confused. What I mean is this, even if you return, do you really think the people who were responsible for your death would just let you continue to live your life like nothing happened? He questioned. Issei froze. The situation became quickly clear to him. Of course they wouldn't. As soon as they found out that he was still alive, they would come after him again. Responsible. You mean Yuma? He asked, her and others. Devils, was his simple answer. Issei was once again stunned. But at the same time, it was at this point that he truly had enough of it all. Okay stop. Devils. He yelled. Would you please care to explain to me from the beginning? Don't get me wrong. You seem to be a okay guy, for a super-powered super being anyway, but... First Yuma turns into this, 
whatever she was, and stabs me. Then she starts to talking about something called sacred gear. I don't even know what that is, and then you show up and tell me something about mind reading, guardians and other universes, it was all bursting out of him now. All his senses were still somehow telling him that this being could crush him like a bug and that yelling at him was probably not the smartest thing to do. But he just couldn't help himself. I just don't understand anything anymore, Issei said now more quietly. Ironically, his time here was probably the first time in days that he had not spent most of his mental power on thinking about girls and their breasts. Yet the backquote man, who could so easily destroy him if he wanted was only looking at him with a friendly, an obviously uneasy expression. Issei couldn't help to think that this guy felt sorry for him. Okay. Um, he said. Issei was still trying to make sense of all of that. He wasn't even sure when he had suddenly developed a sixth sense for danger. If it was that. You were right, the man responded then. I should first explain a few things to you. Like you have probably already figured out by now, your girlfriend Yuma is actually a supernatural being, like I am but different, he stated. Her real name is Rainer by the way, as we have found out. She is actually a fallen angel to be exact. She is part of a group that resides in this town. But they are by far not the only supernaturals here. A fallen angel, like in the Christian Bible you mean? Issei asked him. Like in, fallen from heaven and all that. In a way yes, but I doubt that she or any member of her team have ever actually fallen from heaven. One thing you should know is that there had been a great war several centuries ago between the three most prominent factions, the angels, the fallen angels and the devils. A great war, Issei repeated. Yes, all three sides had been decimated at its end, and the fallens were in the worst state. Literally only their leaders and a handful of others had been left. So it is most likely that Rainer and the rest of her team had been born in the generations afterwards. Today the three factions are in ceasefire. Or more correctly, as it is called today, a Cold War situation. Your hometown Kuo is actually being dominated by the devils. In fact the girl Rias Gramori, that you know from your school, is a devil. It was all just too much. Issei's brain was still trying to process all the crazy information that was suddenly being thrown at him. Rias Gramori, a devil. She was in the class above him in high school for fuck's sake. One of the most popular girls in his school. And what has that all to do with me, he called out now. I am not an angel or a devil or whatever. I am not a member of this damn groups, he practically yelled. So why in the world had Yuma Chan suddenly, killed me? You have a sacred gear inside of you, came the answer. She had mentioned the term, right, he asked. It is, to put it simply, a weapon created by God. It was created in first line as a defense for humanity from the supernatural. Sacred gears are reincarnating themselves into human beings. That means a small number of humans are born with such a weapon sealed inside their bodies. You are one of them. So that is the reason. I was born with such a weapon inside me and she killed me just to make sure that I could never by sheer chance use it against her. Issei began to understand the situation. Or at least a small part of it. Yes. But we were speaking about the ways to bring you back to life, Darian reminded him. So you can bring me back to life? Issei responded. I can. But the truth is, I am not the only one who could do this. There is someone else who is planning to do the same thing. You remember what I have told you about the devils? Backquote Darian. Asked him. You said that Rias Grimori Senpei is one of them. He was still a bit unbelieving about the idea that one of the great backquote Onisamas of his own school should actually be some sort of demonic creature. She is he answered. In fact she is one of the two leading devils of this area. She, along with the one known as Sona Sitri has claimed this town as backquote her, territory. Her territory, yes, without the consent or even the knowledge of most of the people who live here of course. But that is a moral question for another time, he stated. She is the other person who is trying to revive you. I have however kept a hold to that for now. What? You mean you are actually keeping someone else from reviving me? Issei exclaimed in shock. Why in the world would you do that? As I told you, her backquote help, comes with a high price. If a devil revives you, you become a devil yourself, and automatically the servant of the one who did revive you in the first place, he explained to him. 
but it seems Rias Gramori had no intention to tell you that until afterwards, he commented. It was clear by his tone that he thought not very high about the devils and their methods. She would essentially made you her slave, and if you would ever try to leave her the devils would hunt you down and kill you. She knew who Rainer was and what she was planning since the day she had first contacted and asked you out and could have easily stopped her or warned you. But she decided to deliberately let you get killed so that she could force you to become part of her group of servants without having to ask you. So I interfered to give you an actual choice. After hearing this, Issei could only gulp again. He understood now that he meant when Darian said that there is more than just one group to look out for. For the moment I have moved you here, and this place is outside of your regular flow of time. That means we have time to talk. So that you can make your own decision. Now, are you finally ready to hear my offer? He asked him. Yes. Yes I am Darian Sama, Issei replied. You don't have to call me that, he said. I am not your master, unless you want me to be. And despite the power that I command, I don't consider myself above you, or anyone else for that matter, he stated. Let me make one thing clear, if you want me to, I will bring you back to life anyway. No matter if you accept my offer or not, my help is not bound to such prices. Do you understand that? Why? Dot yes, Issei answered, still a bit insecure. And before you even ask that, the reason why I myself have not interfered and prevented your death is simple. As I told you, I am not truly here. I have great power. Nearly unlimited by your standards, but even that is not enough to interfere physically when my actual self is several dimensions away. To that comes that for certain reasons the influence of my group in your home universe is somewhat limited. So all I was able to do was to summon your soul to this place. Issei at this point just accepted that piece of information. Okay. I understand, Issei replied. Well, at least this guy had an excuse for not keeping Yuma from killing him, he thought. Being in another universe actually sounded like a quite good one to him. The offer I want to give you is simple. Do you want to join our group? Join your group? Issei repeated dumbfounded. Yes. We the guardians are protecting all realities from threats, simply spoken, a duty given to us by the force of creation that formed all universes. So that is God then? Issei questioned. Yes and no, he answered. The entity that is in your world known as God is actually a small part of this force that was separated from the whole to watch over your home universe. My power is in fact far above the god of your world. But it is still nothing compared to his true self that exists in all universes. That is actually connected to the reason why our influence in your world is limited. But that is again a tale for another time. What you should know for now is this. Yes we are protectors, of this world like any other, and we are at war. There exists is an organization, no a force, at the other end of the spectrum. They are the true reason our group was formed a long time ago. To counter the threat that they present. Their goals are in some sense the complete opposite to ours. They want to backquote reform. The entire multiverse, by destroying everything that is flawed, failed or unworthy in their eyes, or just standing in their way. That means people states, worlds, even entire universes, all is to be destroyed if it doesn't meet their standards. This is actually yet another reason why I couldn't help you in person. I am currently involved in a campaign in another universe. The war between our two sides has been going on for thousands of years. It makes the so-called great war between the three faction look like a small-scale banter. And you want me to become part of that? Issei called out in absolute shock and horror. Don't misunderstand me. I don't want you to join this war, at least not yet. Not for a long time. What I offer you is this, fulfill one mission for us, or maybe two if you cannot make up your mind. It won't be anything too dangerous, only dealing with minor threats for now. In exchange we will train you and help you to realize the power of your sacred gear. One job, an easy one. That is all we ask from you and then we will properly train you and show you everything you need to know to protect you from anyone who would try to take advantage of you. After this one job you can then decide if you want to stay with us or not. Issei had to admit it sounded better than anything else he had heard so far. If you refuse, I will bring you back just like the way you are, Darian told him. But as I said, we are at war. You can understand that we simply don't have the time to train you if you don't do at least one task for us, he stated. 
Okay. He thought it over. I guess we can show you in any case the basics of your sacred gear's power, even if you say no. We will leave you to defend yourself. But we will not train you to your full abilities. For that you would have to find someone else. Your other options are to let the devil reincarnate you and willingly become her servant. But then you will automatically get involved into their conflict instead. Or you can choose death and move on to whatever afterlife the people of your home are being sent to. I advise you to take some time and think it over. What kind of job? Issei wanted to know. The job I want to give you is actually very close to home, he said. Answer me one question. If you had the chance, would you go after Rainer and Rias Grimori and kill them, if I offered you the power to do it? Think about it, the one who had murdered you and the one who had set you up to die. Would you destroy any of their subordinates who had helped them in their schemes and is standing in your way? Think about it and answer me. Issei didn't say anything for a few moments. Anger flew through him. He didn't even know who he was more angry at, the one who had claimed to like him and then killed him without a second thought. Or the one who just sat back and let it happen, without getting her hands dirty, when she could easily have prevented it all. Yes, a part of him wanted nothing more than get his hands around their throats. But, he suddenly saw their faces in his mind. No, Issei answered after a few moments. I won't. Despite everything I don't want either of them to die. Or at least I don't want to be the one to kill them. I am sorry. Why are you apologizing? You have passed the test, Darian told him. We want protectors after all, not murderers. Even if the difference between both is sometimes slim. Test. Hey, does that mean you have been screwing with me right now? Issei called out. A part of him could not believe how easily he was now chatting with a being that, by his own words, surpassed God. I admit I did, he replied. I needed to know how you truly feel and just scanning the surface of your mind is not enough. The true job is this. We want you to keep an eye on Rainer. The one you know is Yuma Amano. Find out everything you can about what she is doing. We suspect that she will soon target another Sacred Gear user. Do everything to protect this person from her, or from others. We have reason to believe that there is someone else pulling the strings behind her actions, a organization that could become a greater threat in the near future. Disrupt her plans and interfere with her actions wherever you can, keep a hold on whatever she is doing. But don't kill her or anybody else for that matter if it can be in any way avoided. We are not after Rainer, we want to find and expose whoever is hiding behind her. Moment. Issei said, you want me to go pestering Yuma? A grin began to form on his face. I knew you would like that part, he responded. If you want to call it that, then yes. Make her life harder, annoy her as much as you want, make sure her plans fail completely. But you don't want me to kill her. As I said, this is a low threat mission, by our standards, so it should not be necessary to kill anyone. We are looking for information. You know something. Issei said to him, you have a deal. Are you sure? He asked him. Well, from all possibilities your offer sounds like the best one. And I am certainly not willing to die yet. As you wish. There is however one last thing you should know. When I return you to life, a small part of my energy will remain inside you. For me this doesn't mean much. The little bit of energy spend will restore itself quickly. But you, you will be different. This is a universal law that cannot be changed. Whenever a person is reincarnated, at least a small part of the force that reincarnated it stays inside this person. No matter what method is used, you will still be human. But you will be stronger than before, have access to abilities and power that no backquote regular, human would possess. Well, this is a good thing isn't it? Given your situation it is, yes. I only wanted you to understand that even I can't bring you back exactly like you have been before. It doesn't matter. With this sacred gear thing inside me I was never completely normal anyway, and more power sounds very good actually. I see. Since you have accepted I will send you back now. When you have arrived, one of our agents in your world who is already somewhere in your town will contact you to give you more exact instructions and train you. For this I will plant a telepathic signal in your mind that she will be able to sense. So she will find you quickly and will remove it then later. She, Issei asked hopefully. I know exactly what you are thinking, he responded sternly. Yes, she is attractive, and you will have to talk with her about this topic. Okay, 
He grinned. I will send you back now. We will see each other again in the future Issei Hyodo. Darian lifted one hand and pointed at him. And once again the world around Issei started to change. XXXXXXX Issei awoke. He saw that he was still lying next to the fountain. The wound that killed him however was gone. He decided not to stay here any longer and forced himself to stand up. He tried to bring some distance between himself and the place he had died. Right now he truly didn't want to meet any fallen angel or devil, at least for today. But somehow his legs just didn't want to work correctly. Of course, he had just been dead. What did he expect? After a few hundred meters, he broke down again. He was lying there for maybe a minute. Then he heard someone coming. It seems I have found you faster when I have thought, a voice spoke. So you are the new recruit the boss has told me to find. Issei realized that his worry was needless. This was obviously the agent that was sent for him. As he looked up he saw a young girl. She had brown hair that fell over her shoulders and was wearing black jeans and a light gray blouse and a black jacket, matching her pants, above it. You are the guardian looking for me, he said. Yes I am. And what is your name? She asked him. He saw that she also had a great pair of oppas. Yes, Issei thought, he truly was back. Sadly you won't be for much longer. Before either of them could even ask her what she meant with that, they were both suddenly feeling dizzy by looking in her eyes. And then, a few moments later they had forgotten that she had ever existed. XXX this was it, the fallen angel Rainer thought to herself. With erasing the memories of this two perverts, the last ties between her and Issei Hyodo were cut. All in all, she was happy that she had it behind her. Now that this obstacle was out of her way, she could continue to follow her real plan. She remembered a human teenage boy, who had showered her with all kinds of affection, in his own naive way, and nearly instantly angrily suppressed it. Was she really that starved for attention? She asked herself. It didn't matter. In a few days she would have the key to everything she ever wished for and then she could happily forget everything what happened in this town. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Rias decides to show up here or maybe that your girlfriend finds out that you are still alive, she told him. Okay. He answered, still feeling a bit weirded out by all of this. So you are the supernatural version of James Bond, with boobs, he heard himself saying. She only stared at him for a few moments as she heard his comment, before she broke out into howling laughter. Yes, that is one way to put it, she finally said, between giggles. You really are something Issei Hyodo. There was however something else she had noticed. The energy radiated by his sacred gear, it was not only extraordinary high, it was a very specific sort of energy. That of a dragon. There were a handful of sacred gears that they're based on draconic power, as she knew, and only a few with this kind of power. And for even less of them were the whereabouts unaccounted for, the so-called boosted gear, the device where the red Welsh dragon was sealed into. But there was only one way to be sure. Issei, can you activate your sacred gear? She asked him. You just need to concentrate. It should be quite easy, nearly like a reflex if you know how exactly to do it. Normally you should be able to figure it out by trying it by trial and error a few times. But it should already be part of the information that I just transferred into your head. So just try concentrating, and not to think of my breasts for a few minutes, she added. Issei did what she told him. He even ignored her glorious figure right in front of him. After a few seconds a strange red-colored device that he had never seen before manifested itself on his arm. That is it? He asked. Gariel was focusing her mind on the sacred gear that had just appeared. On the first glance it had the look and also the readings of a normal twice critical. But she knew a few other ways to detect energies than any regular fallen angel would. She could see the enormous power hiding behind it. Yes, that is it, she said. Congratulations. You are carrying the boosted gear, one of the strongest sacred gears in existence. Boosted gear. I will explain it to you. But I think we should leave it for today. You look as if you are already ready to fall asleep, and you have probably heard more than enough about the supernatural for one day. Yes, you can say that, he responded. I will bring you home now. There is something else, I think you shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Not as long as you can't control your power and are vulnerable like this. When the devils find out that you are alive, they will without a doubt want to interrogate you, and like you are now, they will probably squeeze every bit of information out of you that you have. Hey, he called out. Sorry, but that's how it is, she replied. You can't even hide your power or shield your mind, unless you might be able to do it instinctively. Actually this will be under the first things I teach you. We will spend the next day training and learning. Just tell your parents that you are sick. Given your condition a few minutes ago, that would not even be a lie. But if I tell them I am sick, how will we explain being out the entire day, he questioned. Leave that to me, she told him, smiling. XXXXXXXX. Kuo Academy, the occult research club all in all, Rias Grimori was not really having a good day. Not that there was any danger or even serious problems for her. It was simply that things were not going as she had planned, by far and that made her feel uneasy, at least in this case. But it was not only that. Something strange was going on here, she knew it. Have you found out something? She asked her Queen Akino, aka her strongest servant, who had just entered the room. Officially both of them were third-year students of Kuo Academy, one year higher than Issei. In truth they were both high-class devils and Rias for her part was a backquote pure blood a born devil and the heir of one of the most powerful families, the sister of one of the devil kings, and one of the two devils who laid claim to the territory of Kuo. Sorry Rias, we have been searching the entire district for him, Akino answered. Or maybe I should say for his body, foo foo, she added. The sound of her voice and the grin on her face hinted that she was actually holding back a light laughter at her last comment. For some reason this callous behavior infuriated Rias. Akino. She exclaimed angrily, that is nothing to make fun about. He could be dead. The plan in question was in this case the recruitment of a sacred gear user, none other than Issei Hiodo, who had now vanished from their sight. What I am here, Bucho, Akino responded, pronouncing her title, is being honest. Her behavior as well made suddenly a 180 degree turn and she was now dead serious. You knew the risk, but you still insisted that we do it this way. 
there was never a guarantee that Issei wouldn't just throw the flyer into the next trash can. If you were worried about his safety, you should have thought about it earlier. But that is not what happened. He, the card was clearly being activated. For a moment at least, but then something cut it off. Rias explained. That wasn't my point. Akino retorted visible irritated. There had been a dozen things that could go wrong and he would die for good. And now you suddenly act all worried about him. You could have just asked him. You know. It was easier this way. Easier for who exactly? Akino questioned. It was not usual for this two to have a dispute like this. Despite being master and subordinate, they were the best friends. But since Issei Hyodo had disappeared on them, she had developed a protective streak about their younger fellow student. Dot dot dot. Now that it was probably too late to make a difference, a cynical part of Rias thought. If I remember right, you went along with it, she told her. If you had problems with my plan you could have mentioned it a few days ago. Akino had to admit, she didn't have anything to answer to that. Rias was right, at least in this point. If she had any problem with that crazy plan of hers, she should have made her position clear far earlier, before this had happened. We will continue to look for him, she stated. But if we don't find him, we must go by the idea that the fallen angel had probably fulfilled her mission. I know, Rias said. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
he wanted to clarify once again. In a sense, through the boosted gear, he is at the very least bonded to your soul. And he is more powerful than a god. Yes, more powerful than most of them, in this universe at least. But that doesn't mean that you are Issei. I have explained to you how it works. For now, you can only draw small amounts of power from it, until you learn how to draw more and be strong enough to hold it with your body. Yes, for now it just doubles my power every 10 seconds, he replied. Very soon you will probably be able to draw more boosts at will and maybe even unlock the higher powers of the gear, she told him. Will I then also be able to do such incredible things like creating a dimension out of thin air or conjuring souls from other universes, he asked. She grinned. Maybe not exactly that, but you will have incredible powers, she stated. But I will hardly be the one to teach you all that. Despite that you may think of me, I am not a cosmic level powerhouse like our leaders. I am just a regular field agent and just a little bit stronger than a normal fallen angel of my level. The guardians had just showed me a few tricks that I learned. And I am not that long in the organization myself, she explained. If I am honest, if it had not been for them, I would have probably fallen anyway, in the regular way. Would you then also have such a bitch like Yuma? The question had slipped through his lips before he noticed the sad look on her face as she said this. In the next moment he wanted to kick himself. Believe me, being a fallen angel is not easy, she answered. I might have been worse. Then I am truly glad that you met them, he said. So am I. You truly want to return to school tomorrow? She asked him. Yes. I guess I just don't want to miss everything because of this. You are deeper than someone would first think. If only you want to, she commented. Well, I think you can go now. I have thought you just enough that no devil will take easy advantage of you. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
I have been asked to go there for my new mission, she stated. Okay, Issei just said. He had to admit, there was something about this girl. And it was not just the strange energy he felt from her. No, somehow she just seemed to radiate kindness and compassion. He wasn't sure. Maybe that he knew this had to do with this telepathy he was developing. Or maybe Asia was just that kind of girl where you could see that she had a good heart. But, a part of him suddenly painfully realized, he had thought the same way about Yuma. At the first look, she had seemed like that too. Yuma, Rainer, he said to himself, why did that stupid bitch even had to go out to kill him like that? She had told him that he was a threat to her. Why? only for the cheer chance that he would one time side against them. Ha! He thought, had she not killed him in the first place, he would have just continued his life with going to school every day, spending time with his friends and trying to peek on girls. He wouldn't have to worry about people trying to kill him or about having this devils in his neck and their attempts to backquote recruit him. And by the way, if he truly was that dangerous, why had she never tried to bring him to her side? She was in the perfect position. He would have done anything for her. Was he not worth to bother in her eyes? Bitch. Suddenly he realized what in hell he was thinking. What the heck? He didn't want to join Yuma and whatever crazy group she was part of. Damn it. He had already joined the good guys. Or at least as close to the backquote good guys as he could get. Issei. Is everything all right? He heard Asia's voice asking him. You looked as if something is truly worrying you. He concentrated on her and tried to push any thought about Rainer out of his mind, for now. She truly sounded concerned about him, despite knowing him only for a few minutes. It's all right Asia, he answered. I just had to think about something. Hey Asia, do you want some ice cream? Issei asked her suddenly. He saw that they just came across a parlor. I, I would like to. But I still have to go to the church. They are waiting for me, she replied. But at the same time her eyes were drifting off to the ice cream shop next to them. I see you really want to. Issei started to laugh a bit. Tell me, have they even given you a special time when you have to arrive? No, but, then you can also take a few minutes longer, don't you think? It will hardly make a difference now, right? He pointed at one of the tables in front of the shop and gestured for her to sit down. If you think so Issei, she said and smiled at him. Hey it is you, they heard another voice. It was a little boy who had been sitting at one of the neighboring tables. Issei didn't recognize him, but Asia seemed to know the boy. I wanted to thank you for what you did for me earlier, he said to her. Is this your boyfriend? The boy asked her, causing both of them quite some embarrassment. No. No, I am a sister of the church, she stammered. I cannot have a boyfriend. Asia's face turned downwards. For some reason, she was looking even more ashamed than before. He is just showing me the way through the town, she said quietly. Along with the words backquote sister of the church, Issei felt a wave of pain coming that he knew didn't belong to him. Asia, he thought, there was something not right, and he intended to find out what. It was in this moment that Issei was looking at her, truly looking at her like he would at any other girl. She was pretty, even if she wasn't really the type of girl he would normally go after. Okay, he would go after every girl, he admitted. She just wasn't the type he would normally imagine. Asia had very big bright blue eyes and long blonde hair, an incredible cute face. Her breasts were quite small, but they seemed to be nice looking from what he could make out form the way they were shaping up beneath her clothes. Still the nun outfit made him feel a bit uneasy. Issei froze and became red in the face as he suddenly realized that he was thinking about her in that way, and she was a nun. His mind turned back to reality. She has helped you. Issei asked the boy. Yes, I fell and was injured. But then she came and she healed me. Healed you. Issei repeated, thinking about Asia giving him first aid. Yes, just like that. Isn't that cool? The boy asked. She is truly an angel, he said. In opposite to what most would think however, his words caused only another stab in Issei's heart. An angel, yeah right. Yuma's face flashed once again into his mind. The boy was still talking to Asia for a few minutes, as they all had sat down. Asia, she truly was a good person. Meeting this boy had only confirmed it. She was friendly. She took the time to help an injured little boy, 
while she herself was walking around in a town she didn't knew. She even seemed to show true concern for him, a guy she had just met and who had just offered to help her out. Besides that, he just knew. Whatever kind of power he was developing, it allowed him to take a short at what was inside her mind. He had to say she was the most kind and innocent person he had ever met. After a few minutes the little boy who had been talking with them returned to his own table. Issei, there is something I want to ask you, Asia addressed him. Yes, he replied, curious what she would say. Would you be my friend? She asked. Whatever question Issei had been expecting, this was not it. Your friend? Yes, the truth is. I never had a friend before. What? How can that be? I mean, you are clearly the nicest girl I have ever met. Thank you, she replied, blushing visibly. It is just, I was raised by the church. I never had any family, and then, then I had this gift. A gift? He asked. Yes, a gift from God. I can heal people, just by wanting it. When the church found out about it, I was declared a holy maiden and that meant I couldn't have any friends. I was always alone, she stated. Issei wasn't exactly sure what to think about this backquote gift. Maybe it had something to do with the energy he was feeling from her. But he was sure about one thing. He was saddened for Asia than anyone before. And he would do everything to make her feel better. Of course I will be your friend, he told her, and he meant it. Thank you Issei, she answered. The smile she gave him was heartwarming. But another question he had been asking himself was eating at him. Was he, at least on some level, using Asia to distract himself from thinking about Yuma? Was he somehow using Asia to get over her? No, he promised himself, he would not. Asia deserved far better than to be treated like this. Hell, not even Yuma deserved that. He suddenly remembered her killing him. Okay, maybe she did deserve it. But he would still not act like this. He would be Asia's friend and for her own sake, not to make himself feel better. So this is where you are, he heard a voice he knew all too well saying. I have already been looking for you. Gariel, he said. Yes, the fallen angel who was training him replied, I thought we wanted to meet when your school was over. I am sorry, I sort of, forgot, he stated. He knew how weak of an excuse that was. This is Asia, he introduced her, I have met her in town, he said. Asia, he turned to her, this is Gariel, she is a friend of mine. We actually wanted to meet, but then I met you and. Sorry Issei. I didn't want to cause any trouble for you, she replied. It, it is no trouble at all Asia. Right Gariel? He asked. But then he realized that she was only staring at Asia without saying anything. Gariel? He asked again. Issei, could I speak to you alone for a moment? She responded. Of course, I will be back in a minute Asia, he said to her. Okay Issei, she replied. He and Gariel were walking a short distance away. Issei, do you realize just who this girl is? She asked him. What do you mean? She is Asia. We have just met and become friends. She is a nun from Europe, and she told me that she had a backquote gift of healing, from God and became a holy maiden. Issei, don't you get it? She is the sacred gear user we have been looing for the entire time, and you have just run right into her. He was now looking at Gariel with his mouth open. It all made sense, her healing people just by thinking about it. The strange energy radiating from her. Issei slapped his hand in his own face. I am truly an idiot, he stated. How could I not figure this out by myself? You may be an idiot, she responded, smiling warmly at him, but if, then you are for sure an incredible lucky one. XXX so Issei got a few answers about some of his questions regarding Asia Argento. But what exactly was this voice that he kept hearing? He asked himself. This wasn't even the first time that it suddenly appeared. Have you still not figured it out? Partner. He now heard the same voice asking him. You. Who are you? Issei asked. Moment. Partner. You are this dragon. Drake. Yes I am. He confirmed. After this fallen angel has informed you which sacred gear you carry, I think this guess shouldn't have been so hard. I just didn't expect you to simply speak to me, at least not so early, Issei responded. True. Thanks to the telepathic abilities you are developing it is far easier for us to communicate as it would normally be. 
They surpass the ones of any angel or devil I know of by far. Degrade admitted. Aside from that, your powers are developing in an incredible speed now. I have to say, even I am impressed. Issei remembered what happened during his visit to the Occult Research Club. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
aka the chief devil, he thought sarcastically. Bucho will arrive in a minute Isei-kun, Akino said to him. Why don't you sit down? Issei's eyes wandered between a free place on the couch between Tei two female devils, and an empty armchair close by. Standing at the opposite end of the table to another one where Kiba was just sitting down. After a few moments of hesitation, mostly because he got a good look at Akino's figure, Issei chose the armchair instead of Nest to her and Kaneko. It is nice to meet you Hyodo-kun, Akino welcomed him. Thank you Akino senpei the same to you, Issei replied. May I ask where Ria Senpei is? She is the one who invited me after all. Oh, she will come any moment, Akino answered. Why don't we talk to each other for a while? Issei had to admit he was nervous. He was surrounded by devils. Devils who obviously wanted to recruit him for their team and had no qualms about the methods how. Who had no idea what had happened to him and he had no way to know how they would react. In opposite to Asia, he had no real insight into the feelings and motivations of this supernatural beings. It was as if something about them was blocking his newly developed sixth sense. I see you have arrived Hyodo-kun, he was greeted by Rias Grimori who had just arrived. He felt his jaw fall down as he took a look at her. She was wearing nothing but a towel. Beneath it, he could see, she was completely naked. I am happy that you could make it, she told him. I am sorry you had to wait but as you see I came just out of the shower. Issei was caught between his urge to look at her body and being gobsmacked about her actually thinking he would buy it that it was a coincidence that she just backquote happened, to shower while he arrived here. Still as he saw the form of her body lining up under the towel, for a split second he began to doubt if it had not been a mistake not to join her, before he came back to his senses. What did you want to talk with me about Grimori Senpei? he asked. Please wait a minute, I want to get myself clothed first. I can hardly change right here in front of you, right? She gave him a smile that normally would drive him insane, had he not been so nervous about the situation he was in, and that not because her lack of clothes. Akino, would you help me here? She asked. About a minute later it was over and a fully clothed Rias Grimori was sitting in front of him. Tell me Issei, is everything all right? She asked him. I have heard that you have been missing school yesterday. I am okay. I was just not feeling well the last day, he replied. Really? She asked knowingly. Issei, you can talk with me openly, something in her voice changed. I know that something happened to you during your date two days ago. I'm not sure what exactly it was. What? How do you know that? He asked innocently. How do you even know I was on a date? Yes, how would you? Unless of course you had me followed the entire time, he thought silently. He knew all that already, but he didn't let it show. Issei, she said, I want to tell you the whole truth. I was trying to protect you. Protect me? He asked incredulous. This time his surprise was not entirely faked. I have heard that you have been asking about a girl named Yuma Amano. That nobody could remember her. Yes, he simply replied. Everybody claimed that I must just dreamed her up or something, he said with a light grin. I assure you that she certainly exists, Rias answered. She stood up and picked something from her desk, that she handed him. It was a photo. It showed him and Yuma walking together on a street. He took in the details. He knew when this was. Whatever reaction the devils had hoped to achieve, the one they would get was the exact opposite. Issei, Rias continued, dot the truth is. I am a devil. Once again he was somewhat surprised about her open admission, but pretended not to believe her. Oh, that is a good one Rias Senpei, he said and forced himself to laugh. As an answer, she just materialized her wings. Interesting, he though, they were different from the ones of the fallen angels. More bat-like instead like the ones of birds. Oh, okay, I guess this has to convince me, Issei stated. So you are really a devil? She nodded. You should know there are three great factions, the devils, the angels and the fallen. She essentially repeated the same story about the factions and the great war he had already heard, and told him once again about the sacred gears and that Yuma was a fallen angel. All in all, nothing new there. Then, however she came to a part he found interesting. She mentioned how fallen angels were sometimes hunting down and killing sacred gear users. I was pretty sure that she was trying to kill you, Rias said in this moment. 
So I interfered to save you. I send someone to give you a certain flyer before your date started. You remember that, right? Now Issei was the one nodding at her. Inside of it was a so-called summoning card. If you were dying and wished to stay alive, you would have activated it and it would have allowed me to transport myself to you. I could have saved your life then by turning you into a devil. You would have become my servant and could have joined our club. I would have protected you from then on. I am still willing to if you accept. She let him take in her words. But something went wrong. I don't even know what it was, she admitted. I know your life was in danger Issei. But something happened and kept me from helping you. I know that something happened during your backquote date. I wanted to ask you what it could have been. Issei stood up from the place he was sitting. You know, he said, looking at the photo that showed him and Rainer, I remember this. It was on the day when I first met her, several days before our date. Why exactly do you have such a picture? He asked her pointedly. How long exactly have you known who Yuma was? Rias didn't answer for a few moments, obviously not expecting such a question. She also didn't expect Issei Hiodo, a normal high school student, to call out someone who had just revealed herself to be a devil like that. So let me get this straight, Issei pointed out. You have known about her for days. You have just told me that you expected her to kill me. Yet you didn't warn me. You could have sent Kiba to get me a few days ago and told me all this. Instead you chose to let me get murdered and then try to turn me into a devil and into your servant. And you call that saving me. Rias was now dumbfounded, not only because of his answer that was by far not what she had expected, but also because he should have still been in shock about the revelation what she was, that a supernatural being was standing right in front of him. Instead he barely seemed to react to it. Did he maybe already know what they were and was just acting along? Or maybe Hyoto wasn't who he claimed to be, another thought came to her. You already knew what we are, didn't you? She asked him. Now it was Issei who didn't say anything for a few seconds. Everybody else looked similar surprised about this. Yes, he finally admitted. She did try to kill you. But somehow you survived and found out about everything, Rias concluded. In some sense yes, he stated. You know, we could still protect you from the fallen angels. If you would join my peerage we can keep them from ever attacking you again, she told him. So now you are actually trying to ask me. Now, he responded. He could barely believe the nerve of that girl, and he could not believe that he used to look up to her so much, just like everybody else at this school. Look Issei, she said, I know we are not perfect. Far from it, I know that. But the fallen angels have tried to kill you, you admitted that yourself and they might try again. So you should at least consider it. Even if you are angry at me, we are still the only ones in the town who can protect you from them. You think so? He replied. A moment later he realized that he had probably said too much. What do you mean by that? She questioned. I don't have to tell you anything, he said. Issei, this town is my territory. If someone else is active here, I should know about it. Your territory, your territory, he exclaimed, if this is your territory why didn't you bother to lift a finger when I was killed? Too late he realized what he had just let slip. What? Rias asked. The others were looking at him in open surprise as well. He just admitted that he indeed died. Yes, I guess there is no longer a reason to hide it, Issei admitted. There is someone else out there, someone who don't expect a price like eternal servitude for saving a life. They let me decide if I want to join them or not. And will you? She asked. I am not sure yet, he answered truthfully. There is still one more thing, Rias told him. After all you have just said, how can we be sure that you are still the same person as two days ago? What do you mean? He questioned. Maybe you have been, replaced, she stated. Imagine someone could have killed or captured the real Issei Hiodo and replaced him with some sort of double, an infiltrator. Kiba, she said. Move. Issei suddenly heard a voice in his head. He saw that Kiba suddenly had a sword in his hand and was swinging it in his direction. Before Issei was even fully aware of it, his body reacted. His sacred gear materialized on his arm. It was a simple test, Kiba on his part knew. He was supposed to stop his blade just a short distance in front of Hayudu's throat. Just to make completely sure that he hadn't been, as Bucho said, replaced. 
But things turned out a bit different. Issei heard the voice again. Boost, boost, boost. It repeated this simple word. He easily blocked Kiba's sword with his sacred gear, nearly on instinct, and then landed a hard punch on the obviously surprised devil. This punch was much stronger than anything a regular human should be capable of and send Kiba flying through the room. Issei's own energy was now showing itself. To all their surprise however, it seemed still human, only incredible powerful. Kaneko had already moved to help her comrade. But suddenly she noticed something. Hyodo was not simply using his sacred gear, he was also using some form of senjutsu, or something very similar, a form that she had never heard of before. And that realization made her stop in her tracks in complete shock. She instead kept her distance and was just watching Hyodo carefully. Who? What are you? Rias asked now completely unsettled as well over the display. What the hell was that? Issei thought nearly at the same time. That voice, and he could barely believe what he just did to Kiba of all people. Akino was looking at Kiba, who to their relief didn't seem to be injured. I assure you that I am Issei Hiodo, not as you said, an imposter, he told her. But the people who have resurrected me have also shown me how to activate my sacred gear, and they teach me backquote other things to protect me from the fallen angels, and from you. You don't need protection from us, Rias exclaimed. We are not trying to kill you. This here was just a test. No, he answered, you are just standing by and let others do it, and then try to turn me when I can no longer refuse. I have seen nothing that convinced me that you wouldn't also go one step further. Right now I see little difference between you and them. She visibly flinched at his words. I am sorry, she told him. So am I, Issei responded. I can assure you one thing, the people who have brought me back are not planning anything against you, and neither do I, he added. I am not your enemy Rias and I don't want to be. But I won't join you. So please stop following me around and spying on me. I will leave now, or do you have another question? No, she answered. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse. He heard Akino commenting, as he had just left the room. XXXXXXXX now back in the present, he and Gariel, were still standing together close to the ice cream parlor where Asia was waiting for them, talking with each other. Issei. Someone is coming, Gariel stated. Do you sense it? Yes, is it, someone like me, she said. Rainer. Or a member of her team, Issei stated. On some level he noticed that for the first time he had called her by her true name and they are here for Asia, he realized. Yes, Gariel answered. We better get ready, Issei. She proclaimed, I have an idea. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
maybe I should take care of your backquote boyfriend, here, so that you will not get distracted again. Before Asia could say anything else, Issei stepped forward. I don't know who you are lady, but if you want to cause trouble for Asia, you can make it out with me, he stated. Oh really? She replied. If you say so. As she said this, she let her wings appear on her back and began to form a spear of light in her hand, like Yuma did before. Then she threw the spear at him. Issei however materialized his boosted gear and used it to deflect the attack. What the? Warner called out as she saw what just happened. Before she could finish her sentence, Issei had already moved forward and punched her in the gut. The fallen angel tried to fight back, but she was taken completely by surprise here, and so Issei landed blow after blow on her. Suddenly the boy materialized a sword in his hand, what caught her off guard even more. And she barely managed to dodge his first strike. Whatever this boy was, he was no normal human. Issei smiled. Gariel had just showed him how to do that just before this fight. Another nasty surprise came for Kalawarner as her opponent, right in the middle of the fight, seemed to grow much stronger from one moment to the other. Had he been holding back before? She wasn't able to hear the simple word, boost, coming from the sacred gear. Then, as she had just evaded another strike from his sword, he landed another vicious punch on her with his other hand where he had his gear materialized, and sent her crashing to the ground. You bastard, she hissed, struggling in vain to stand up. You are the one who attacked me, Issei stated. Who in the world are you? She asked him. My name is Issei Hyodo, he replied. You have heard of me. She indeed remembered that name, impossible. But before either of them could say anything else, another surprise appeared. This time a positive one for the fallen, as Issei was suddenly kicked in the side and sent crashing to the ground himself. As Kalawarner looked up, she saw another fallen angel she didn't knew. Who are? Azazel send me to keep an eye on your group, the stranger stated. My name is Gariel, as it looks I came just at the right time. Let us get out of here, she told her. What? I need the girl, Kalawarner called out. Don't even think about it. You are dead weight as you are now. And I don't know if I can take this guy alone, Gariel said, looking at Issei who just came up again. Be glad that I am even here to save your ass. One of our soldiers should not go down so easy against a human, even if he has a sacred gear. Come on. She grabbed the injured Kalawarner and lifted her off, flying away with her. As they left, Issei looked after them, Asia standing a few meters behind him. He smiled. It seemed Gariel's plan was working out. XXXXXXXX a short time later the now two fallen angels returned to the church. Rainer was already waiting for them, in an even worse mood than before. And now more than surprised as she saw them. Kalawarner. What in the world happened to you? She asked as she noticed what state her comrade was in. And who are you? My name is Gariel, special agent for Azazel, she lied. I have just found your friend here as she had some trouble with a sacred gear user. Sacred gear user, Rainer exclaimed. What sacred gear user? Who was he? She asked Kalawarner irritated. She had already taken care of the only one who should have been in this area, she thought. She visible hesitated with her answer, for good reason. He said his name was Issei. Issei Hiodo, she finally said. And Rainer felt as if the world was crashing down on her. This couldn't be. She grabbed Kalawarner by the collar. Nonsense. She called out. That can't be and you know that. I killed Issei Hiodo, you hear me. I killed him. That is indeed what he said his name was, Gariel confirmed, and before you bring it up, I assure you he was under guarantee not a devil. Issei Hiodo. Rainer thought. Why did that name seem to keep following her?